everyone. So today we're going to go through the Archimedes Principle Lab. Archimedes Principle tells us that for an object submerged into a liquid, the buoyant force, which pushes up on that object, is equal to the weight of the water displaced. And as we all know, weight is equal to mg, mass times gravity. So to get the mass of the water displaced, we're going to actually multiply the density of water, which I've given to you, by the volume of the water displaced, which we're going to find. So because of this, rho equals m over v, you can see you can rearrange those terms and get mass. So mass is rho v, and the volume of the water displaced in this case is going to be equal to the volume of our block. And it's true in this case only because we're going to completely submerge the, the block into water. So vw is equal to vb, and since our block is conveniently a q, VB is equal to LQ, and Chip is going to read L off to me right now. I'm getting 3.205 centimeters. Okay, so now you have what you need to find VB, which is what you need to find the buoyant force. So we can also calculate this experimentally. What the buoyant force looks like experimentally is an apparent change in an object's weight when it's in and out of the water. So Chip's going to mass this object in the water and out of the water, and he's going to read off the, the weight to me. And when you subtract them, you'll get the buoyant force. Right, so my triple beam balance is giving me the mass, the apparent mass is 0.2751 of kilograms, 0.2751. I want to multiply that by 9.8 meters per second squared. And that is 2.7 newtons. So the apparent weight out of water is 2.7 newtons. And now if you notice when I put, if I submerge my block in water, the apparent weight goes down. So I want to get the apparent weight while the block is completely submerged. It's going to be less. And that is 0 0.2431 times 9.8. And that is 2.4 Newtons. Okay, so you have everything you need here. You'll subtract these and you'll get your experimental. And then of course you'll do a percent error on this as well. So in case you've forgotten, percent error it's going to be equal to your theoretical minus your experimental absolute value divided by theoretical times 100%. And that's it.